Hey y'all, Bad Girl Mystic here. Um, yeah, shit's getting real, right? <laughs> Things are getting crazy. Um, so what I want to share with you today is my top five tips to dealing with being suddenly self-quarantined and a shut-in. Call it Hermit 101. Um, what type, what top five fucks you should give. <laughs> and this is based on all those, um, like marketing videos that they teach you and stuff, but this is real shit. Um, so for those of you that know, um, for about seven years ago, I went from being a type A personality type of person who was always out and doing things and prioritizing other people's needs above my own because I was always in the service industries and it was how I was brought up. Um, I was brought up as a woman and your greatest virtue is to self-sacrifice and I would procrastinate on shit that I was doing because I didn't want to be doing it. And so, um, and a lot of women relate to what I'm talking about. Uh, I had problems with time management. I was always over promising and under delivering and I would beat myself up because, um, I had no... I didn't trust myself, so I didn't have any inner balance. And so what does this have to do with the self-quarantine we're going through right now? Well, this is going to bring up a lot of shit for people. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk to you about the obvious stuff that you're reading everywhere. What I'm talking about is we're going into Shadowlands and just letting you know that this pandemic that we're facing, it, it, it targets the lungs and lungs hold our grief. So things are going to come up and it's going to be little things that you don't imagine and frustration and anger because our, our daily habits are going to be disrupted. So that's very frightening to the human body. We like, we don't like change. And even though it seems like it's, you know, we're all clustered in and we're in our own space and we should be okay with that. What we're doing is we're being forced out of our masculine habits of overdrive into the feminine and needing to go deep and be within our space and learn how to nurture and alchemize and marinate and make good choices <laughs> for how we spend our time. So for myself, um, I had a traumatic brain injury and I see a lot of things people are doing in self quarantine and stuff. And, and I remember like doing this, I was told that I had to suddenly stop work. I had to suddenly stop doing everything. Um, and if I didn't listen, the repercussions to my health, similar to what a lot of people are dealing with was huge. Got something in my eye. Anywho, time out. Girl Scout trick eyelash. Oh, I got a doggy right here that wants to be on my lap. Anywho, the point is, is that I remember like going, okay, I'm going to use this time off from work and I'm going to do every project that I want to do. And I'm going to, ah, oh, dang, I'm going to do every, I'm going to, I pulled weeds and rearranged closets and I was pushing myself. Now the thing is, is during this time, we don't want to use up all our chi. We want to build chi, especially with anything with the lungs, um, with our immune system. We want to build reservoirs of energy. We want to get stronger. We want to get more limber. Um, we want to make sure that we keep moving our lymphatic system. We don't want phlegm and body fluids to get stuck and yuck. And this is all very important. And so when we're in grief, when we're traumatized, we kind of go into maybe what we do in sick mode. Maybe we'll fill up on a lot of snacks. Maybe we'll binge watch stuff. We won't move very much. This is about movement. So I talked about, okay, what fucks to give. So number one, these are the ones that I think are the top five. And I have this listed right here. But number one, and this is kind of what I'm talking about, pace yourself. Prioritize your fucks of what you want to give. So for example, with housework, um, I'd beat myself up that I didn't completely revamp my whole house. And so what I learned was 
pick those three things that make you feel better that you do every day, whether it's making a bed or doing the dishes or sweeping or just pick one that you commit to every day while you are um, creating this new connection with this, your home. You're deepening your connection with your home. And that's more important to connecting to the consistency as to tackling a huge, big closet or filing project or something. If you want to do a big project like that, then dedicate 15 to 30 minutes only a day and just slowly work on it through the time period. So the second thing I said, I believe that you should give a fuck about in terms of transitioning into this new space and habits and I talked about this about it already, is move every day. Once again, it um, takes 30 days to build a new habit, 60 days to um, 60 to 90 days to create a body memory. So we're all building new habits, and this is very frustrating to the brain, and it triggers all the survival bells and whistles on top of what we're intaking in terms of information, fear, so give a fuck about um, moving. We, our bodies tighten up. We go into fear positions, body language. What happens when you see a dog that's scared? It's tail tucks. So we want to make sure we're untucking our tail. Also, when we're looking at our phone a lot, curled over, if you're going to be on your phone, invest in a stand that you can look at and and it clips next to you and you can look into it. Um, so once again, grief and fear, if we ignore it and let it build in and we keep saying, well, I don't have it this bad or I don't have it that bad or whatever, and we keep trying to push it down and be strong for others, then we're collecting and we're, 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 we're holding on and we're just, we're not moving these stress hormones like cortisol. You want to move it out of your breath. You want to move it out of your sweat. You just even want to move it out stretching or through your voice. So if you have the space and privacy, speak your fears. If you're unable to, and you have small children around people, you don't want to hear you, then Write them down in a journal. Get it out. Because the more we can acknowledge what's frightening us, then we can prepare. We can make a plan. We can look at it and see what is old triggered stuff. And for those of us that have early childhood PTSD or um, mental health issues, this stuff is going to trigger us. So even more of a reason for going through this shift is to build she as opposed to trying to stay super busy and ignore what's going on. Number three, um, use the powers of saying fuck off. <laughs> That's number three. That's what you should give a fuck about. Give a fuck about your tribe. Give a fuck about keeping your circle tight. Um, this is just the truth of the matter is some people are going to fall away from your life right now. There will be those that will not return your calls or your texts or, you know, that you're, you're caring deeply about. So really think about who are you giving a fuck about? Why do you give a fuck? Um, if you're listening to people's opinions, do they pay your bills? Who are they to you? What do they contribute to your life? Um, unfortunately, there's just some people we have to let go or limit our time, um, I'm the black sheep of the family. No surprise there. I love my family dearly. We are on different planets when it comes to what we value and what's important to us. And at a certain point, um, after my brain injury, I no longer want to keep defending who I was to people who were committed to misunderstanding me. So, um, I really tightened my circle and limited who I engage with. So this is being asked of us, but this is also a good time to really think about who is on your zombie apocalypse team. Okay. Um, and I, let me see if I have any more notes on that one. Um, oh, limit your news. 
So pick a, pick a delivery system. I like to read, so I read my news. Um, I'm a kinesthetic learner, so listening and watching people can be very um, taxing and draining. And I like to follow different global publications. So I, I read my news. I only watch if it's someone who I respect, whose voice I believe carries truth. That's the person who I put time in and listen. People who I do not respect or I feel are dishonest, I do not watch their news. Um, and if I do watch, I only watch on YouTube so that I'm I, I'm watching in clips. It's it's not something that's going on in the background. Turn off any news in the background. You don't want to hear stuff streaming 24-7. Um, create check-in times, a.m. and p.m. of what source you want to check. So if it's the CDC, if you're somebody who's very scientific, that would be a good choice. Um, limit yourself to staying informed without being overwhelmed. Number four, play every day. Oh my gosh. Um, emotionally being stuck in the house and, and going through that grief of missing out. And for myself, I used to love going to live music and concerts and I used to perform, um, theater and speak. And so I went through a lot of grief, you know, of not being able to go to the movies anymore. I grew up in Los Angeles. So the, so going to the movies was a huge, big treat. It was just, um, it's one of those things I love. So keep playing every day. There's a lot of great free resources right now on arts and crafts and virtual tours of museums and national parks and even if you just look on playing theater games or doing, um, do the walk of silly walks every day, do silly dancing every day, um, just do something at least 15 minutes a day that you don't, it, you can't describe it, whether it's just putting on headphones and listening to music or whatever that is for you. I don't care if it's just sitting down and eating chocolate with peanut butter. If you get that surge of joy through your body, do it. That's what you want to want. That that's food for your body because we're putting off so much stress hormones right now. You want to add back good, healthy hormones. Same way you take a probiotic to add good, healthy bacteria into your digestive tract, by the way probiotics. Um, very good time right now. Uh, keep your digestive tract filled with an army of good guys. So play, 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 give a fuck about playing. Just fucking enjoy the hell out of it. Um, last one. Gratitude is fucking magic. My favorite thing favorite saying, like quote, is Hafi saying, thank you is the only prayer you'll ever need. And so after my mom died, I was fucked up. I had had a brain injury. I had tried going back to work. I was badly injured. I was in extreme amount of pain. I was angry. I was like in the 11s of pain and just pissed off and my body was frozen in fear. And this is where a lot of this creative practice, it came out of a space of needing to flip the switch because I was stuck. I was physically, emotionally, and mentally stuck in fear and grief. And so by starting every day off, whether it's just being grateful for having one more day together with everyone, and I'm going to get emotional because our one of our kitties died last night who we had since he was a kitten, him and his brother. Um, and he was amazing and I adored him and I got to hold him for his last breath. He was fine. I think he had a stroke. He just cried and fell over and he was gone within seconds. I had him and then I did it. So this it's life. It's the truth. Life moves pretty fast. So even though I am the black sheep and distant from my family, I took time to call my dad today and check in on him. And I'm going to check in on all the people who I do have a lot of love and gratitude in my heart. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to say it now. So really take time 
to write down what are your top five things you want to, you're grateful for every day. Grateful for your health, grateful for shelter, grateful for clean air, clean water, whatever that is for you. Start your day with that because there's a lot of stuff that is fucking scary right now. So it's more important to hold what we do care about even closer. And that's when you'll see the fucking magic happen. Stay safe. Peace out.